In the last video, we derived the period equation using the matching circular motion. Now let's take a better look at this equation. Period equals to 2 pi times the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant. We can look at this qualitatively. For example, the larger the spring constant, the shorter the period, right? So, for example, if this box is oscillating, at the moment when the box is uh, here, a distance x from the equilibrium, the net force on the box would equal to the negative kx equals to ma. The larger the k means uh, the larger the force. For the same mass, that means uh, the larger the acceleration. That means uh, the box gets to move faster so it makes sense for the period to be shorter. And we can look at the mass. For the same spring constant, the larger the mass, the longer the period. If the spring constant is the same, this net force at this position is the same, the heavier the box, the smaller the acceleration. That means the box doesn't get to move as fast, so the period is longer. Let's say we're changing the mass of an oscillator to four times the original value. By what factor would the period change? According to that equation, period is 2 pi times the square root of m over k. We're only changing the mass, so this is proportional to the square root of uh, mass. The k, 2 pi, they all stay the same. And the mass changes by a factor of 4, and we have to put it in the square root. So this is uh, 2, which means uh, the period should double. Now let's go test it. I want to show you how the mass affects the period. Now I have a 100 gram hanging and I can measure the time for 10 cycles. Remember, one cycle is up and back, and then next cycle and next. I will count 10 cycles and then watch the video and take my time reading from the video. Starting with the 6 centimeter amplitude, 6 centimeters away from the equilibrium. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I'm changing this mass to 400 grams. I have a 200 grams here and a 100 grams. Okay. Now there's a new equilibrium position. So this is the new equilibrium position. Again, I'm going to count 10 cycles with a 6 centimeter amplitude. So that's 6 centimeters down below the equilibrium. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You probably have noticed that the amplitude got smaller and smaller with each cycle because the oscillator does lose energy to air resistance and internal friction. Now I will go watch the video and measure the period. It's nice to have videos to use for the measurement of time. I can get much more accurate data than using a stopwatch because I don't have to deal with the reaction time and I don't have to worry about the errors caused by my judgment on when the mass gets to the end point. I got 5.6 seconds for 10 cycles for the 100 gram mass and 10.49 seconds for 10 cycles for the 400 gram mass. From the simple harmonic motion period equation, the 2 pi times the square root of m over k, we know that when the mass quadruples, the period should double. The period is not quite doubled. If Double the 5.6 seconds, I get 11.2, which is more than the 10.49 seconds. And if I calculate the percentage difference between these two numbers, I get about 7%.
In this lab, we have errors in our measurements and in the simple harmonic oscillation model we're using to analyze these oscillations. Now let's see if you can list the sources of error involved. The discrepancies can be caused by, for example, the calibration and tolerance of the video timer the time interval for each frame of the video, the spring not being a perfect Hooke's Law spring, the fact that there is air resistance and internal friction. And it makes sense for the period to be less than twice the period of the 100 gram oscillator because the spring has mass. So the real amount of mass oscillating is 100 gram plus the mass of the spring versus the 400 grams plus the mass of the spring. And this is less than four times the earlier mass. So it makes sense for the period to be less than twice the old period. Let's try one more question. If a spring mass oscillator's amplitude changes by a factor of one half, by what factor does its period change? We know that the period equation is uh, 2 pi times the square root of m over spring constant k. There is no amplitude over here, which means the period does not depend on the amplitude. So the period is going to stay the same. It doesn't change. Or, of course, you can say the period changes by a factor of 1. Same thing. This may seem weird because the larger amplitude means the box has to travel longer distance in each period. Smaller amplitude means shorter distance. Why would the time taken be the same? Let's see. We can look at the conservation of energy. If the oscillator does not lose any energy to air resistance or internal friction, the total mechanical energy is a constant, which means the total mechanical energy at the end point, all potential energy, 1 half k times the amplitude squared. When the oscillator is at the equilibrium, all the energy is in kinetic energy, 1 half m v squared. And these two are equal. Oh, 1 half is a constant, of course. k is a constant. m is a constant. I mean, when we change the amplitude, we didn't change the k, we didn't change the m. So that means the maximum x squared is proportional to the v max squared. If we take square root on both sides, we get the amplitude is proportional to the maximum speed. So when the amplitude x max becomes halved, the maximum speed also becomes halved. So there is a shorter distance to travel, but the, uh, the box is also slower. That's why the period stays the same, because these two, they change by the same factor. Now let's go test it. Let's look at this oscillator with 100 grams of mass. In the last video, we measured the time for 10 oscillations with the initial amplitude of 6 centimeters. Of course, because there is air resistance and internal friction, the amplitude decreased as it oscillated. But we can still compare the period using different initial amplitudes. So let's change the initial amplitude to 3 centimeters and measure again. 10 cycles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I will go watch the video and measure the time. Earlier in the video, I had 5.60 seconds for 10 cycles for the larger amplitude. And I just measured 5.42 seconds for 10 cycles for the smaller amplitude. The difference here is about 3.3%. That's pretty close to what we would expect from an ideal simple harmonic oscillator. The period does not depend on the amplitude.